Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise be to you, Christ. There is a passage in the book of Acts where Peter encounters a community uh, that knows about Jesus and seems to be, um, you know, working pretty hard to, like, live a good life, but he notices something is missing. So he says to them, did you guys receive the Holy Spirit? Does anybody know the story? Read Acts lately. Um, Acts is a great book. Acts is like an action novel. If you want a book that really reads quick, a page turner, read the book of Acts. He says, have you guys received the Holy Spirit? And they look at him and they say, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. And he says, oh, that's the problem. And he baptizes them in the name of Jesus and they're filled with the Holy Spirit and suddenly everything starts to click. We didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Now there are times that someone might say the same thing about the church. They might look at the church, the Christian church, and say, there's just something wrong here. And they might say to us, did you guys get the Holy Spirit? And we might not say we didn't know. We might say something like, we're not sure what to do with the Holy Spirit. If God, after 2,000 years, has accomplished a lot, he has certainly spread the word about Jesus. We've got Bibles everywhere, even in the hotel drawers, right? People are um, People know that there's truth. They know something about the story. If there's something still missing, like if there's an era that's ahead of us, like a new and different era for the church, it's a Holy Spirit era. Because for the most part, judging by our actions, and, and I think even by, like, um, by self-report data, most of us don't know what to do with the Holy Spirit. We're not exactly sure what he, she, it is. We're not quite sure how to use it or live with it or be filled with it. So we're all still kind of waiting. We're a little bit like the people in the upper room, you know, who they waited for 10 days, which probably felt like forever. And they're just like, he said to wait for something. Here we are. So for that reason, today's sermon is going to be called, can you see that? Quick Start Guide. Today I'm going to give you a quick start guide to the Holy Spirit. We bought a new bathroom scale and it came with a quick start guide. 
And I was like, how can a scale come with a quick start guide, but like the Christian life doesn't? So, quick start guide. Here's a quick start guide to the Holy Spirit. Everything about a quick start guide is so you can have a quick start to start using it, right? Like that scale could be sitting in the corner for days, weeks, years, haven't used it yet because we're not quite sure. This is to get you on it right away. I want you to get on the spirit right away. I want you to start using this immediately. So let's talk. Let's, so that you cannot say, I didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit because you'll know. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not magical. The Holy Spirit is not weird. The Holy Spirit is not rare. The Holy Spirit is as common as an experience of God, right? You've had an experience of God. That's why you're here. You have a belief, but hopefully more than a belief. You have an experience. You have some kind of a relationship with God. The Holy Spirit is just as accessible, just as Common in the sense that anywhere you go, you can experience the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere and always available. And it's not just for special occasions. The Holy Spirit is for everything. What is the Holy, what is the Holy Spirit itself? What is it exactly? It is um, the spirit of holiness. Okay? I'm not trying to be obvious, but let's just put it out there. The spirit of holiness. Have you ever felt a sense of holiness, a sense of reverence? Many of you, I think, experience a sense of holiness as you come forward for communion. <clears throat> you come forward to the table. Sometimes when I'm giving like, people tours of the chapel and I bring them forward, they're hesitant to go through the altar rail. It's because it's holy. And they, they revere that space. They revere the sense of God there. That is holiness, right? You know what holiness feels like. The Holy Spirit is that spirit of holiness. What you don't know, this is maybe the key thing, is that you can evoke that spirit anytime you want. You know how when you've heard a sermon where Jesus says, like, um, love your neighbor as yourself, or I give you a new commandment, love one another. And people always say, how can you command us to love? You just feel love or you don't. And the point is, Jesus is commanding us to love, and you can choose to love, right? You can choose to love someone in this moment that's hard. You can choose to be filled with a sense of love instead of fear or whatever. You can do the same thing with holiness. You can choose in any moment to be filled with holiness. This is why in the early church, the most common thing said about the Holy Spirit is Maranatha, which is come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You call on the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes. That means any moment can be holy. You can be out on a walk. You can, now you, if calling on the Holy Spirit is not like, hello? Holy Spirit? Yes, are you there? Are you available? And it's not, you don't have to say magic words. You don't have to say Maranatha. You don't have to say, come, Holy Spirit, although that's beautiful and an ancient way to do it. You can just open your heart and just sort of call, right? Just the way, same way you call up courage, the same way you call up love. There's an there's a unnameable way in our minds and in our hearts to simply call on something and be filled with it, right? Call on love, call on a sense of peace, call on a sense of courage, call on a sense of diligence. And that's the same action. Whatever that is, you do that with holiness. You call holiness into yourself, and that moment becomes holy. And you become, in that moment, filled with the spirit of holiness, which is filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, it's a little bit like filling a cup. It's a little bit like charging a battery. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, if you can just, whenever you do that, you're going to think, oh, this is much better. <laughs> you're going to really like it. That's why I want you to use it. The whole point is like to do it all the time, to be filled with the Holy Spirit when you're driving your car, to be filled with the Holy Spirit while you feed your cats, to be filled with the Holy Spirit as you're walking from one room to the other. Like there's no moment in your life, there's no place, there's no occasion where holiness won't make it better. Because in a sense, when you're filled with that Holy Spirit, you're immediately um, 
connected to all sorts of different, wonderful, powerful things that make a difference. And we see those in this today's passage. First thing is to be filled. What happens when you're filled? Several things immediately come. The first thing that we hear in our passage from Romans 8, by the way, Romans 8 is all about the Holy Spirit. We only read a little section because it's Sunday, and it feels like we should only have three paragraphs, because otherwise we would all lose our minds, because the church might go like three minutes too long or something. We should read the whole chapter 8 of Romans on Pentecost. Go home and read Acts and Romans chapter 8. The whole thing's about the Holy Spirit. One of the things it says in Romans chapter 8 is we're filled with the spirit of adoption. Did you remember hearing that? A spirit of adoption. It says when we cry out, Abba, which means Father, it is God's spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. This is like the number one thing I want you to realize. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, this becomes your kinship with God. As soon as you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you become a child of God in an active sense. Not a passive sense in the way that everything that exists is made by God. Every person, all things are children of God. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you become a, a, an active child of God. Like, God's Spirit now dwells in you. You share the same spiritual DNA as the creator of the universe. Because God's filled with the Spirit and so are you. This is immediately this heart connection to God, which will make you immediately feel closer to God than you ever have before. And when you felt close to God, you were filled with the Holy Spirit in that moment, whether you realized it or not. A spirit of adoption. What comes with this spirit of adoption? We read in the book of Ezekiel this morning, we get filled with life, the breath of God, the wind of God, God's like, I want you to think about, think about like babies taking their first breath, right? And now they're alive in this world. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we are taking our first breath of God in, of God's Spirit, and we become alive in the Spirit. And we're not only breathing earth, air, and our bodies are being renewed, but we're breathing spirit air, and our spirits are being renewed. Now, can you stop breathing? Not for long. As a holy person, you can't stop being filled with the Holy Spirit for long, or you might end up spiritually dead. You've got to keep breathing spirit. You bring it in, and then the spirit goes out and connects to God in the world, and then you bring the spirit in, and it goes out into the world. It's spiritual breathing, and it gives you spiritual life. The spirit, Paul also tells us elsewhere in the book of Galatians, the spirit gives us like fruits, um, it's actually fruit. It's a singular. But we're filled with fruit of the Spirit. And what that means is when you're filled with the Spirit, suddenly, like, you just can't help it, suddenly there's grapes. Suddenly there's pomegranates. Suddenly there's fruit. When you're filled with the Spirit, you can't help it. Suddenly the Spirit will fruit in peace. And there it is, a beautiful fruit. You might as well enjoy it. Suddenly when you're filled with the Spirit, you'll be filled with love. That's another fruit. You'll be filled with patience. You'll be filled with a sense of self-control. These are, it's not supposed to be an exhaustive list. I think you find it at the end of Galatians. My memory says Galatians 5, but check it out. Google knows. Filled with the Spirit and all of these things begin to manifest in you. The Spirit also is a Spirit of truth. And this is what Jesus says. This is the last one that I'm going to say. Jesus says this, the advocate, the spirit of truth, who says everything that it hears from the Father. If you want to know what's real, if you want to know what's true, if you want to know what really matters, right? You want to just take the stuff from culture and just move it aside because it comes and goes, and you want to take the passions or fears of your, of your emotions, which you know maybe are not always like perfect clarity. It's more of an emotional reaction. Like you want to find out what's really bedrock what really matters, what's really true, what really will make a difference in this moment, the spirit is a spirit of truth which will fill you with that truth. So let's review, shall we? The Holy Spirit is a spirit of holiness. You can call the spirit any time, and the spirit doesn't mind. It's always there. When you're filled with the spirit, you're filled with the spirit of adoption, which connects you to God. 
You're filled with fruits of the Spirit, of all of these good things, like good qualities that are manifest through you. And when you're filled with the Spirit, you're also filled with as the Spirit of truth. Now here's what this is leading up to. See if you can figure it out. Adoption and the way to live, which is filled with all these things. The truth that is the Spirit, the life that comes. So we've got adoption and we've got the way, the truth, and the life. What do those things make you think of? Adoption, becoming a daughter or son of God, and who says, I am the way and the truth and the life? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> that wasn't good enough. Who says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, let's do it again. Who says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus. Oh, there we go. So if you're filled with the spirit of adoption, and you're filled with the way, and you're filled with the truth, and you're filled with the life, then who are you filled with? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ becomes manifest in you. We usually just jump to Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you'll be filled with Jesus. And everyone says, I don't know what that means. We just explained it. Right? We just explained it. These are all the things that come. You're filled with the spirit of Jesus. In a sense, you have everything Jesus had. Jesus is like, I've got to go. I'm going to give you all my equipment. Okay? Here's the Holy Spirit. Here's the truth that you're going to need. I used it. It's really great. Here's the life. You're going to find that that's really going to work for you. Here's peace, righteousness, holiness. Here's all the words you're going to need. I'm giving you all my stuff. Now I'm going to go. But guess what? With this stuff... There's nothing that can hold you back. So the only thing left to say for the quick start guide is what can you do with this scale? What can you do with the Holy Spirit? And the answer is absolutely everything. All the things. You can talk to your spouse with the Holy Spirit. You can plant herbs and spices with the Holy Spirit. You can mow your lawn with the Holy Spirit. You can correct your children and grandchildren with the Holy Spirit. You can have an awkward conversation with your neighbor about the whole, with the Holy Spirit. You can do all the things. This is what Jesus is hoping we're going to do, is to be filled with the Spirit and then to go out and use it. I want you to imagine a brand new era in the world where all of God's people are filled with the Holy Spirit and using it. That's what God is kind of hoping that you and I are going to do. Amen. Amen.